by one woman who tomorrow will spend her first Mother's Day without her son. Once upon a time, the notorious B.I.G. was neither big nor notorious. He was simply Christopher Wallace. He was a warm and loving son. The biggest force in his life hovers at just over five feet and 100 pounds. His mother. And tonight, the very private Valletta Wallace talks for the first time since her son's murder. Nobody knows what I look like. Their concept of me is a 300 pound or a more than 300 pound, five foot seven, six foot, cigar smoking, beer drinking, street corner socializing mama. In fact, this petite mama is an elementary school teacher who raised her only child in this brownstone in Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. This bedroom was back there. This was our living room. Even in these pre-Versace days, he showed a flair for styling and showmanship, even when he was just helping direct traffic for passing school children. While he was crossing the street with the kids, he would stop all traffic and start to sing, stop in the name of love. And all the traffic would stop, and so the kids would go by. He attended Catholic schools. He was making good grades. Very good grades. Very, Aspirations very good grades. of becoming a dentist? They said if he maintained his average, he would get a scholarship. But instead of hitting the books, his mother says at age 17, he started hitting the streets. He dropped out of school and started to get into trouble. But those closest to him say he was never as bad as the images he created in his rap songs when he became notorious. I'd like to welcome to the stage the notorious B.I.G. Once he hit the stage, he began spinning fantastic stories of life on the street, of a gun-toting, designer clothes-wearing, drug-selling player, told in the first person. It seems that in the world of so-called gangster rap, a rap sheet is a resume to be exaggerated. And then he said, Mom, just an image. I have to sell records. Sell records he did. This one up there is the gold and the platinum sales for um, Ready to Die. That first CD, Ready to Die, made him a millionaire. And suddenly, the man who didn't have enough to buy a car could now roll in this specially fitted Suburban, complete with five television sets. And he moved from the hood to the burbs of Teaneck, New Jersey, where his lifestyle was a curious mix of good father and good fellas. Along the way, he befriended another successful rapper, Tupac Shakur. Tupac was his best friend, yeah. He was his real, real buddy. Until 1994, when Tupac was held up and shot in New York, Tupac believed Big was behind the shooting. Tupac shot back with his blistering, hit him up. And now there was no question that their friendship was over. The lyrics include a death wish for Big. He also boasts of sleeping with Big's wife, recording artist Faith Evans, who spoke to us exclusively in a candid interview. What do you want to say about your relationship or lack thereof with Tupac Shakur? Well, I don't really want to say. There's nothing to say. There was never a relationship between Tupac and me. None of it is true as far as me being involved with him. None of it is true. So you're saying you were never... I was never involved with Tupac. Never. The rap rivalry became more sinister this past September when Tupac was shot to death by an unknown gunman. Big's longtime friend and rapper Little Caesar says Big was upset by Tupac's murder. He was hurt, and he was scared, because he knew that that was going to cause a lot more drama. I'm going, going back, Six back months later, Cali, Big was in California, Tupac's turn. March 8th, the head of his record label, Sean Puffy Combs, invited Big to a party. The music from his upcoming CD was featured. I heard they were playing hypnotized over and over again. Over and over again, they played it four times back to back. I whispered in the air, I said, how you feeling right now? He said, I'm feeling my best. I can't wait till March 25th. He was two weeks away from the release of the biggest CD of his life, titled Life After Death. When it was time to leave the party, they formed a caravan, with Puffy in the lead, Big and Caesar riding in a suburban in the middle, and a car with bodyguards just behind them. 
In this exclusive interview, Little Caesar talks about the events he witnessed. Why, why wasn't there any security inside the van? I don't know, maybe because like Big felt like he needed his friends around him more. Like, so you were sitting just behind Big? I had my window like halfway down, so I was looking out the window, you just see a car pull up on Big Door, like pull up on Big Door and no words, just a single dude in the car and he just fired shots inside the door. When we saw it, we just, everybody got down in the car. Everybody bent down and just hit the shots just ringing in the car. But no window busted or nothing. Nobody screamed. Big ain't screamed. He didn't say, ouch. Oh, he got a gun. Nothing. He was 24. Big wrote Miss You for a friend who was killed. But the song from his new CD would turn out to be a requiem for the rapper. And thousands of New Yorkers paid their last respects. So far, Los Angeles police detectives have made two trips to New York in search of the killer. We're conducting interviews now. We're seeking out more of the witnesses that we can find. But uh, sometimes that's not an easy task. We're making progress. It's moving along. Uh, but I'd like to give a lot of thanks to Mrs. Wallace. She's been very helpful in locating and having witnesses available to us. And are you going to have to pack all this up? I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I really, really don't know. It's kind of hard right now. We haven't decided yet, but this house, it has a lot of sad memories. Because he's just looking at it and um, he's not even here to enjoy it. That's his ashes there. His ashes? Mm -hmm. One of her grandchildren is too young to realize what happened. The other is old enough to ask questions and to cry for her daddy. Valletta Wallace is crying too, for Christopher and for Justice. I want to know why could anyone be so cold-blooded, so venomously cruel as to pull a gun on someone, take a life, take away a son, take away a father, a husband, a friend. I have to see him. I have to. You want to? I want to. I have to. I have to. Valetta is praying that tonight someone will recognize this face witnesses have given the killer. Police say he's in his 20s. If you have any information about the killing of Christopher Wallace, also known as Biggie Smalls, and the notorious B.I.G., please call 1-800-CRIME-TV.